Hello, everyone. Welcome uh, to this quick lightning talk, hopefully, on hackathons, uh, OpenStack hackathons. Um, I'm hoping not to be too long today, uh, mostly because this is going on YouTube. So hello, YouTube uh, viewers. Uh, so keep it towards the five minute in. So this is, this is nice and quick. Just quickly, I'm David Flanders. Uh, I work for the OpenStack Foundation. I'm specifically in charge of trying to support the application developer community and all the things kind of built on top of OpenStack. So at this conference, we're always talking about, you know, the core infrastructure as a service. Well, my job is to figure out how these kind of things sit on top of, of course, it's the impossible mission because there's so many of them. Nonetheless, hackathons represent a really important activity because it's the place where we bring not just OpenStack um, developers and, and people around OpenStack, DevOps, network engineers, system engineers, but all the application developers and all the other tooling, open source tooling that you can have on top. In fact, Let's actually get into it. So hackathons, leveling up the stack. Um, what I'm gonna cover in the, the nice little lightning talk we have today, uh, well, what is a hackathon? So why do we do it? Well, we wanna bring the whole community together. Uh, do you wanna host a hackathon? And this is really what this primary talk is for, is to encourage those of you who wanna bring and level up your community, hackathons are an incredible way to actually grow your community and bring other open source community components together all in the same place. Uh, where do you get help? Uh, OpenStack community is fantastic for putting the help, sending experts, mentors, all the rest of it. Um, the planning tools you'll need to run a hackathon, it is a big undertaking. There's a little bit of expectations management to have and how much effort and people you need to run a hackathon. Uh, and then finally, what's the value you actually get out of it? So after spending you know, a significant period of your life doing this event and getting to it, what are the actual things that you can look back and say, this is the value we got out of it, this is what was achieved. Uh, and then we'll have some time for Q&A as well for everybody to ask questions. So onwards and upwards. Let's, let's look at what a hackathon looks like. So here's a little video of the last hackathon we ran uh, in Guadalajara, Mexico. Oh, whoops, go back. Here we go. Hackathons are incredibly inspiring. So inspiring because it's education. It's helping application developers understand the opportunities with cloud computing and come together and start to build a community. Enable them to think creatively it allows more people than ever before to have access to technology. All collaborating, sharing ideas, being able to make digital things and digital ideas is what a hackathon does. Guadalajara is one of the fastest growing technology cities um, in the world. We're very happy to be here for the first ever OpenStack application hackathon in the Americas. This is the second one that we've done. The first one was, uh, was in Asia. Behind me in the room, we've got around 200 people participating. The theme that they try to get the teams to develop around are applications that can help make an impact on society and improve the quality of people's lives. 48 hours, 72 hours, and really go after that. The really exciting thing, of course, is the hackathon also is a competition. So what is the best idea? Welcome to the OpenStack community. We consider all of you a part of it now. So I'm going to push pause there. You can watch the rest of it on YouTube if you like. It goes into and just shows the incredible diversity and everybody actually engaged in it. But I just wanted to give you a feel for what it's like and all the rest of it. Um, but like I said, you can also watch the summary video of the Taiwan Hackathon uh, as, as, as well as this video with uh, Guadalajara. So what are hackathons all about? So really the, the hackathon, what we're trying to do is bring together all of these application tooling communities all in the same room. So it's not just OpenStack, it's getting Kubernetes or OpenShift or Cloud Foundry or Mesos or Docker Swarm, provisioning uh, tools for applications like Ansible or Chef or SaltStack, um, SDKs, Gopher Cloud, Ruby's Fog, Apache's LibCloud and Python. So all of these technologies, these are the ones that we pick and choose based on your local community. We build that infrastructure and that stack. We decide which tools you want. We get in the mentors and experts you need to be able to actually train people in this and get them ready for the hackathon. And then most importantly, the experts and the mentors in the room to help the teams competing. 
Oftentimes, we do these uh, events with universities, so there's kind of two sizes of events we do. Either large events, which do take quite a bit of planning, um, and those are with universities, governments, companies, all engaged. Usually, it's university students or researchers participating in teams of about three to six people, and then a bunch of mentors who are in the red shirts, the teams are in the black shirts, and the mentors are going around as experts and helping use and teach the teams how to use these different tools in situ as the hackathon's going. We also do a bunch of training beforehand as well, um, send some video pre-training skills to the teams about a month in advance so they can watch some screencasts, get to know the mentors who are gonna be there, uh, and also just learn these basic technologies on how you actually are gonna use these application skills. Um, and that's really one of the coolest things about this and why it does take around six to nine months. If you don't have a cloud, we gotta figure out how to partner with the cloud, build a cloud, then we gotta figure out how to put these other application tools on top. So that can take up to three months sometime for us to make sure to not only build the cloud you want, but to decide which application tooling we want on it, along with the experts and mentors, and then also do some testing, because we obviously have, you know, we had 50, 60 teams, up to 300, 400 people in Taiwan in the room. The last thing you want is the technology to fall over. It's just a great way to also test a new cloud. So if you got a new public cloud provider or a new company starting to provide an OpenStack cloud, it's a great way to get them involved so that they can test their infrastructure and see how it works in the real with real users. We also do smaller hackathons. So if you're from a company and you've built an internal um, OpenStack cloud very specific for your company, say a bank or something like that, and you want to start to roll that out to your developers internally within the company, we also have a formula for that. And that way it's, it's obviously more, usually more of a closed event. It can be an open event as well as you want. But a lot of those times, it's a great way to get your internal organization to bring your different developer teams inside of that organization and kind of do an internal hackathon, uh, which is really a great way to actually promote um, new skills training in a way that isn't chalk and talk. You know, this is a bit boring, you all having to listen to me and point at things. So uh, it's a really interactive training methodology uh, hackathons provide for being able to roll out these systems. So community coming together is really the key in this, right? So we don't even label these necessarily as OpenStack hackathons. A lot of the time we'll just say it's a cloud hackathon, it's an app hackathon. And the reason is, is because we want to break down those, found, those barriers between uh, all the different open source communities. We're all open source. We all believe in the same thing. We want to couple these technologies together in the right way. And most importantly, we want to bring not just the different technologies, but the different skill sets. In this community, you'll see a lot of DevOps, a lot of sysadmin, a lot of network engineers. In other communities, we want to get the application developers. We want to get the site reliability engineers. We want to get the UXers, the behavior-driven development testers, the ideators, the innovators. We want all of those people to come together. And that's actually one of the most empowering thing about hackathons is that it's a whole of community event, sharing experience and explaining your point of view to somebody else in a real world experience of trying to build those applications. Um, we also make sure obviously to uh, have your participants there. So we usually go around to the, the universities and ask them to send teams. We also get startup, the startup community. We go ask the other meetup groups to participate in it. So it really is a large partnership activity to bring all the different developer communities in the same area. Mentors, as I said, are really essential, um, not only to be there on the day and to act as kind of substitute team players to go into the various teams and help them, but also, like I said, a month in advance, we get those mentors to create nice little video screen tutorials that they can send to the teams so the teams can meet up watch those videos, start to play with those different technologies and understand those technologies. One of the coolest things I love about it is we get to do uh, um, these tutorials in different languages. So obviously you could see um, where we did the Spanish language ones, we actually would, if it wasn't in, in Spanish itself, we would transcribe those and actually provide language specific tutorials, which is one of my favorite parts of the job is to actually reach out and make sure we're, we're hitting the whole world that is, it isn't just English centric. Uh, judges, we uh, usually get some high profile judges to come around and as you can see, uh, we had one of the leads of Intel come by, one of the leads of IBM. They're looking for new talent, they're looking potentially to even buy the teams in. Uh, oftentimes we'll fly them to a summit to meet other CIOs and CTOs, so it's a great chance for um, especially new developers or, or developers in general to actually get that next level job that they want and to prove themselves so that they can go in and, and have that opportunity. 
Promoters naturally, uh, we're really good at promoting all those technologies and tools, so we make sure to have a media team support you, do media interviews, we get the newspapers in, uh, do some interviews, so forth and so on. Uh, and then not, last but not least, we make sure to have good event organizers, so we contact your local meetup advisors, we get the whole group working together to be able to put this hackathon on. And then of course the foundation, uh, usually via myself, uh, I'm there to support you and provide liaison and connect you with the different people that you need connected with. And to hold your hand a little bit. Hackathons can be a bit scary. I've, I think I've been through about 50 of them now over, over my career, so uh, I've got plenty of advice, but everyone's been different. Everyone's had its own little unique uh, um, thing. Okay, so. You might be saying, I don't want to run a hackathon. I do want to run a hackathon. It is a considerable investment of your time. If you do want to run a hackathon, please, please get in contact with us. The way that the process begins is you just email events.openstack.org. You'll probably be forwarded through to me. From there, I have you meet with our hackathon working group. So these are people who have run hackathons in the past who just interview you, make sure you're aware of the obligations and what goes into it. We have a nice little checklist, a little toolkit of things you need to commit to. Um, and once you've had that interview, then we uh, get the foundation agreement signed. We find out what resources you need. Um, depending on the size of the hackathon, the foundation can either help provide liaisons and contacts to uh, people who could provide sponsorship. Sometimes the foundation provides a little support itself if we can. Um, and most importantly, we make sure that you have that steering committee. Because like I said, we don't want this to be a vertical OpenStack event. We want this to reach out to all the um, technologies and communities that surround the open source cloud ecosystem. We want to bring everybody together. Uh, also, the steering committee is obviously really important to just, as I said, the events are usually anywhere from two to 400 people. So you need that steering committee to help invite people and take care of the different aspects of the event. And again, we've actually got a great um, kit which will allows you to understand what those different roles are and how people participate in that. Last but not least, things like understanding sponsors, prizes, media, swag, registration, process, and promotions. We've got templates for most of those, so it's, it's really easy to just get the event bright up in the right way, know what your media stage needs to look like, what kinds of questions to ask your newspaper people, and to really make the event something that is going to get a lot of attention and level up your community. We never want to run a hackathon where we don't know that after, you know, the, the promoters and the people are all around it, that that local community is going to carry on and be bigger and better connected. You know, we want to always be improving the open source community. Um, as I said, I already talked about the mentors we provide for you and getting those training videos in the, in the language to suit. Um, getting the mentors and judges to arrive. Uh, we often have done pre-training as well, so usually the hackathon happens over the weekend, Friday to Sunday or something like that, over a 40-hour period. Usually camping, depending on, on the environment. Obviously not in the companies. We don't have a lot of CIOs to tent, get tenting out yet, but maybe one of these days. Um, but yeah, we make sure to have the mentors and judges there to participate. Uh, and then last, last but not least, it, it really is a crazy adventure. Uh, it's very tiring, but I walk away from every hackathon just truly inspired. And I think that's one of the most important parts of open source is that you can walk away with that feeling that I know people, I've got, I, I've never walked away with a hackathon where I haven't had new sincere friends that I stay in touch with and I really adore. And um, yeah, they're just people I, I really love to work with. So who helps you do all this? Again, I can't overstress, this sounds like a big undertaking, but what the foundation does is it brings the full force of the community behind it to make sure you are supported and you have the people and understanding for being able to run the event you want. So um, obviously we help you get that cloud infrastructure up. Uh, we get you connected with the other communities. So I will hand you over to the lead of OpenShift or Kubernetes if you want to use those different technologies, the lead developers of the different SDKs. We make sure to provide all those contacts. So one of the coolest things if you decide to host a hackathon is I guarantee that your, your Rolodex or your list of contacts of people who are in the know and making stuff happen, it significantly increases. You really all of a sudden level up your, your own personal career in terms of knowing the in people in the, in the open source, the movers and shakers of the open source community. Um, obviously registration, promotion, and feedback, we make sure to support you on that. Uh, sponsorship guidance, training in a box, uh, safety and community code of conduct. I myself usually attend to make sure that you are following the community code of conduct and that there's no um, 
that if something does break down, there's a correct process for dealing with it. It is a competition, so you have to set up your judging process very carefully, make sure it's fair, and we really make sure to actually monitor that and audit it so that if anybody asks why or why the people won the competition, we have a very, a very excellent process for telling you why we made those decisions and that it was transparent and fair and all the rest of it, which is really essential. Um, and last but not least, um, is just, I cannot stress the, the tidal wave of support you get from the community. We've had people fly in from all over the world for hackathons because it's that inspiring. The people in this community love coming to hackathons once they've been there because it's just incredibly empowering. Um, and it's a, great, it's a great way to meet all the, all the people who come to these events. As I'm sure you know, over 60 countries are represented at the summit this year. So really great way to uh, engage that international community, even though it's a very local event. So finally, I'll just leave you with the, the kind of output. So once you finish the hackathon, you gotta ask yourself, well, what did I actually get out of this? I've spent a lot of time and effort in it. And these have been the things that when we've interviewed people and talked to them, they've said, this is what I get. One is leveling up your community to the next layer. You know, you might have a couple of DevOps and people who like to install OpenStack. Well, this is really gonna push them. This is gonna make sure they not only have a cloud that works with a lot of people, but you're actually gonna build application technologies, cloud technologies on top of that, that are going to make sure that that community is coming together and that a larger conversation is happening. You're gonna increase the size and shape of your community, so it's not just gonna be DevOps or business people. You're all of a sudden gonna start getting app dev who are engaged in this. Usability engineers, you're gonna get a larger skill set, a larger shape and size of what your community actually looks like. Um, training, training, training. You're gonna have these videos, you're gonna have all these people skilled up in new skills. These are great resources, which when you go on to continue to maybe do other hackathons in forthcoming years, you already have those resources, so it gets a lot easier to onboard new community members, because there's a lot of skills to learn in this space. Usability is one of my favorite things, so oftentimes we'll take the mentors and we'll interview them, and we'll say, where were the problem points? You know, and that's, that's one of the cool things about open source is that, you know, we're very careful in the way we address this, but not all these technologies work perfectly with one another, and sometimes it's hard to eat your own dog food. And this event is a fantastic dog fooding event for understanding how these different technologies build on one another and how to use them. Uh, and finally, it's just the real world human testing of it all. When you get DevOps in the room with sysadmin, network engineers, application developers, usability people, all of them have very different perspectives on the world. And the way you break those down and you stop the arguments is actually just getting them together, solving these problems with one another. And people walk away from it with, their, with a shift in their mindset. They think about things differently. Developers who might be saying, no, I'm not gonna change my point of view on this feature, all of a sudden, because of the human interactions and seeing the pain on somebody's face when they've gotta use a technology and it's not working, that's the magic sauce. That's how you get people to realize what real usability features are, what key features are, versus just the features which are cruff and you know part of the long tail. So I'll leave it there. I've gone on more than I, I really wanted to, but I get excited about this, as you can tell. I apologize if I've spoken too quick, but this is a good opportunity um, to ask any questions people might, ha might have around hackathons. Perhaps, perhaps I can ask a question first of all of you. How many of you uh, would consider, I'm not committing you, how many of you would consider running a hackathon? Okay, that's fantastic. That's really great. I'm glad. I'm glad. So what kind of questions can I answer? If there's no questions that great, then that means the presentation was good, right? <laughs> So the question is, um, what are, what's the biggest obstacle in trying to, I guess, engage an application community or? Yeah, 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 okay. So look, I, I think it's hard to speak of obstacles, but I will say that one of the reasons why you need a kind of six month planning period at the very least is because most of the organizers of hackathons go and stop by a bunch of different meetups. And they say, hey, Ruby people, hey, JavaScript people, hey, Python, and it's different in every local community, right? And that's what actually begins the decision for which application tool sets you're gonna build on top. So 
they'll go and they'll meet with the Ruby people and the Ruby people will be like, oh yeah, we would all love to use FOG, the SDK that works on top of OpenStack. And you're like, okay, great. Or you go to another community and they say, oh, we really use Java. We want to use Cloud Foundry because Cloud Foundry has got a bunch of good Java modules for being able to use it. So going and essentially doing those interviews, that's pro it's, it's not hard because believe it or not, you go to these other meetups and they're just really happy to hear you're trying to bring things together because meetups have really siloed groups into certain things. And some people have come together, you know, like there's a DevOps meetup, but those DevOps meetups now aren't talking to the application developers and they're the people they're supposed to be working with. So I think that just going out and being humble and saying, hey, I'm trying to get together a bunch of meetups to actually run and do some new ideas and do some new training. Uh, it's a bit scary because you're putting yourself out there, but at the same time, it's incredibly rewarding because you're gonna make those new contacts, you're gonna have a better idea of what your local community looks like in terms of the tools they wanna use. We wanna use Ansible with OpenShift. We wanna use uh, Gopher Cloud with Docker Swarm. And that's people, it's not, it's not the technology, it's actually the people who wanna use those things. So it's just taking that time to go and, and do the meetups. Did that, that kinda answer your question, more or less? Cool. Any other questions? Gonna get off easy. Yes, please. Uh, you don't. People do fumble, um, and that's that's why it's really essential that we um, a a month in advance. So we get a steering committee going about six months out, and that steering committee decides what are the tools and technologies we want to use. So we build that in the infrastructure. And then we go and we find the mentors, the people who have actually done that stuff, to then provide some video training. So a month from the hackathon, we start to send this, this training in a box. So the teams that start to register, we say, hey, check out this uh, training on how to use um, Shade with Ansible. And so it's a big Python, Shade is a really good Python library, so we make sure to work with the Python group, and we send them videos saying, hey, here's how Shade works, here's a screencast of the code working, here's some things that are gonna break down. Best of all, after you've watched this video, you're gonna show up at the hackathon, and I'm gonna be there. And you can ask me directly, and so that mentor during the hackathon, they're all wearing red shirts, you know, so if you see, look in this diagram, you see you get the mentor's help desk, right? And they're all wearing red shirts, and then you have all the teams in the middle. And so those red shirts are kind of swarming around the room, and it's, it, if you saw in the Guadalajara hackathon, it's a really cool effect, because you'll have, you know, that developer bouncing from table to table saying, okay, this is the way you need to understand shade. And the coolest thing is, is all the value that those, those mentors get because the lead shade developer will be there talking to this team who's like, oh, I don't understand how I do the authentication configuration to be able to use multiple clouds. Well, all of a sudden that mentor goes back and says, I need to improve the documentation on that. I've seen the pain on somebody's face. And that, that's really the best part is hackathons, you're gonna get some failures. There are some teams who are not gonna get to the finish line in that amount of time. The best thing is, is that we can feed that back and we can actually do usability checking on this. And that's one of the biggest thing open source misses, is it's scary to dog food. It is scary to see somebody's face uh, in person when they're actually using your technology. Did that answer your question? Yeah? Cool. Yes, please. I don't, I don't really know that there's an answer to that. I think that um, the reason why we've done sizes of three and 400 is mostly because we've partnered with universities and universities end up sending their computer science group along with several other computer science groups. And actually it's been interesting. We've had other non-computer scientists as well. Um, but it's, that feels like a number that's big enough that justifies the six to nine months of prepping a cloud and getting it all built. But if you've already got, so if you were to do an internal hackathon, and, and I can't talk about these hackathons because we're NDA'd on, you know, which bank or whatnot we've done, but if you were to do an internal corporate hackathon, you can do those a lot smaller, right? That could be 20 people of, you know, teams of three or something like that. But it, it's got to justify the, the cost and the time of somebody. So usually what you do is you'd meet with our hackathon working group um, and they talk you through a little bit about the time commitment and the resources of why you'd wanna do it. And if it justifies it for the business where the business is trying to roll out a, a continuous integration continue CICD pipeline for 
publishing applications which meet a regulation for a certain country on a bank size, that then becomes a justifiable cost because they need all of their application developers in that company to understand that that's the process that they have to use, otherwise they're breaking the law in the way they do these things. So it's really just up to probably the company. But if you're gonna do a public open hackathon, you want it to be probably 150 at the minimum, yeah? That feels like a good size for competition prizes. Any other questions? Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, please do get a hold of me. Like I said, you can reach me. Um, uh, it's pretty easy. You just Google Flanders and OpenStack. I'm sure you've all seen the television show, Next Door Neighbors of the Simpsons. It's now stuck in your head. You'll never forget me. I apologize. I've had to live with it since 83. Thank you very much. We'll see you around.